Hey there, Tom here. I want to talk about another session I had recently. Um, this one was for a document, documentary film, and it took place in the South. And the composer wanted me to bring some instruments that might be used in that part of the country. And the first, first thing that came to mind was dulcimer. Uh, kind of an unusual instrument. It's not a hammer dulcimer. This is called a lap dulcimer or an Appalachian dulcimer. And uh, the, the movie is, takes, is a documentary. It takes place in, I think, South Carolina. So, you know, the Appalachians end somewhere around there. I'm, I don't know my geography as well as I should. Uh, it's, it's an unusual instrument. It's basically three strings. It's a pair of strings here. I have it tuned low C to, to G to two more C. So it's just a power chord, basically. And, um, and then you'll notice, too, if you look at it, the frets are in, unusual. Okay, You can see down here at the bottom, it looks like a big fret, and then, a, and then another big fret, and a little fret, and then a big fret, and a big fret, and then a bunch of little frets here. Okay, uh, It's very much intended to make it very easy to play. Uh, if you think about a diatonic major scale, it's whole step, ha whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Well, we've got most of that right here. And it ends with three half steps so that you can you can you have more variety at, at the top end, but um, really difficult to play a wrong note on this thing. Here, let me show you. Move the camera. Okay. Now, I'm not a great dulcimer player by any stretch, but Can't hit a bad note. Okay, now the half step here, the extra half step allows me to play C, E, G, I'm sorry, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, or B, C. B, C would be in the key of C. B flat C would make this kind of more in the key of F. Uh, so I could, you know kind of imply an F chord there, or here, okay, um, or, and also on, on this middle string, I could have, here I have G, B, I'm sorry, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or I could have F sharp, and that kind of implies a, a G major. Um, and so you could kind of have uh, the key of C. You could also imply the key of F and the key of G with this tuning. If you tuned up a half step to the key of D flat, you could have the the one and the four and the five and that would be like D flat, G flat, and A flat keys. And if you tuned it all the way up to D, which is pretty standard, um, then this would be D, this would be A, this would be D. You would have D, the key of D, and you could also imply the key of G and the key of A. Um, so right there, there's nine keys out of a possible 12. Um, if I went all the way down to B, I could get those last three keys. So it's, it's, uh, it's a great little instrument for, for, you know, just pulling out something and having a different sound. Um, and it's, it's, it's just a, a fun toy to have. I, you know, I use it enough to make it worth its while. And uh, I got it largely, I got a lot of my smaller kind of unusual instruments because I had this thing that I did for maybe 10 years where every year I would get a new instrument I'd never played before. And that's how I got my oud, um, I got my mandolin, I got a ukulele, uh, a baritone guitar, um, I got a bajo sexto, a bunch of different weird instruments, a charango, a bunch of strange instruments just because I wanted to be that guy that people could call, that composers could call for different instruments. And then I also like to use those instruments in different contexts, um, you know, maybe not uh, specific to their style, but just in other styles. So, okay, now another instrument I used, put that there, another instrument I used was a mandolin. And again, I'm no great mandolin player. This is just a cheap little Fender mandolin. I think I paid like 300 bucks for it. I think I got the case for 10 bucks. That was a great deal. Um, and uh, this thing, 
uh, I, I tune it like a guitar. Now, one of my idols, Tommy Tedesco, a big influence on me, um, he would generally tune everything like a guitar. So if you had a banjo, if you had a, a mandolin, if you had a ukulele, he would just tune it like a guitar. I don't like to do that. I actually like to have the um, instrument be tuned like it's supposed to be. For one thing, I, it makes it a lot more idiomatic. A lot of times when I'm playing mandolin, people want it to sound like a mandolin. Um, and so it takes a little relearning. Um, there's some tricks, and I'll talk about mandolins in the future. Really, what I want to just talk about is this session I did. And the thing I did in the session was probably something really simple. It's like imply a C chord, and then apply an F chord, and a C, and a G chord, or something like that. Just kind of a bed. It just it was it was just kind of an undercurrent um, under the music, and we built other stuff on top of it. Um, and and so I had to kind of think, okay, what what notes do I want? And that's where learning the the fretboard and learning the notes on the mandolin's neck comes in handy. Um, the top string is an E. So in some ways, if I'm playing lines, I can really kind of cheat and just play it on the E string because I can think first string first string on the uh, the guitar. So E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, so that that's pretty easy. You get through the rest of the strings and it's it's tuned like a violin. G, D, A, and E. Okay, and uh, it's kind of nice. To, that's a G scale. Two, there's one octave. There's a second octave. Uh, it's great because it's very compact, and I have two octaves of G in a very small place. It's it's really nice, and so um, I like this instrument a lot. I like to try to just play it like it's supposed to be played. Sometimes I'll do weird things, like I'll play slide with it, or uh, just to create effects. Um, you'll also notice that I I don't know if you can see it, but I do have like foam right here. Okay, um, that's because of, because when I'm recording. Um, if I'm doing something that's kind of choked, um, I, I don't want to hear other things ringing out. If those weren't in there, I'd hear those strings ringing out uh, with sympathetic vibrations. And, and that can be a little bit of a distraction, especially when you're in the studio and you've got two very, very sensitive microphones on the instrument. So, uh, so there's a bunch of tips in there, and I hope this helps. And uh, that's it. Pick up a mandolin. They're cheap and they're fun. Uh, dulcimer, those, you can get those things for a couple hundred bucks. And they're a lot of fun and you never know what you might find a use for them. And they've both paid for themselves a hundred times over. Well, maybe not a hundred times. Yeah, maybe a hundred times over. Anyway, God bless you.